In Exodus 33, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence. Somebody say, Leave and go up. Anytime God wants to take you up in him, up somewhere, he's going to always say, Depart from somewhere else. The reason some people can't go any further with God because they get settled where they've been with God. Amen. Come on. Amen. God said, Depart and go up. Somebody say, There is no going up. There is no going on with him further in him until we learn to depart from where we're at in him. And what I mean by that, where you're at is great, but somebody shout, there's more to him. And the enemy of more of God is named enough of God. People get enough. They get settled where they are. They get cozy, comfortable. They get to the point they embrace what's familiar to them. Somebody say it's called a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit's called a demon in the Bible. Amen? And so they get used to that that's familiar. It's called even traditions of men. They get trapped in them. It makes the word of God a non-effect. Matthew 15 and verses 6. So everybody say, depart and go up hence. So there's that principle. You got to leave from where you are to go somewhere in him you've never been. You got to be willing. Amen. He said, Thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. Ain't it amazing? God says, I'll give it to you, but you're going to have to walk there. You're going to have to go there. I'm not going to bring it to you. When God says he's going to give you something, he's saying you're going to have to walk it out. You're going to have to walk by faith. You're going to have to move by faith and walk toward what it is I say I am giving you. Verses 2 said, and I will send an angel before thee and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, and the Perzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite and somebody say all the termites. Hallelujah. Amen. Now most people would shout hallelujah an angel sighting. Oh, an angel's going to go before us. And, 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 and all the enemy is going to be defeated. God said he's going to give us the land. Verse 3, he said unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Most people get even louder right then. Oh, glory to God. Blessings after blessings. Some people's just satisfied with hearing God's going to fix something for them. God's going to finalize something for them. He's going to give them their miracle, going to give them their blessing. But notice what he says immediately after he says all these great things he's going to let the angel go do. He's going to send the angel to do it. He said, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Stiff-necked just means they will not turn when God says turn. They stuck in a rut. Stiff-necked also causes you to see a portrait of somebody with their nose tilted up. Pious, haughty, come arrogant. Rebellious. God says you're stiff necked. In other words, you're stubborn, you're rebellious, you won't turn, you won't move with me, you won't do what I tell you to do, but I'm going to give the land to you because when I make a promise, I make a promise. I'll keep it. But the only thing is, I'm going to give you your promise, but I'm not going with you. You won't have my presence. It'll be for me, but I'm not going with you. You can have what I give you, but I'm not going with you. I'm not going to be there. I, you, you, I give you all this promotion because remember, he said, go up. Remember in verses 1, X 33, somebody say, promotion's up. Yeah. I'll give you the promotion. I'll give you the promised land. I'll give you everything you want. I'll, I'll knock the enemy out of the way. I'll give you all the blessings of the land, but I'm not going to go with you. You'd be surprised at the people that would settle for that. Most do. Even moderate. That's the kind of God they want. They want a God who will give them their promises, give them their victories. Hello? At the expense, at the cost of him not being with them. They don't want his presence. Because somebody say to have his presence requires holiness. It requires living right. It requires leaving your sin. It requires leaving the stuff that grieves him because he's holy. And he won't keep walking with that. After a while, he's going to say, I'm not going. You, 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 you too rebellious. You too stiff-necked. 
Amen. And so I'm, I can't go with you no further. Amen. And a lot of people are satisfied with that. Because God says, if I keep walking with you, I'll be consumed you. You keep rebelling against me. In other words, God said, I'm going to spare your life. I'm going to leave you. Wow. Thank God for the cross. Well, there'd be a lot of dead people. Amen. A lot of us wouldn't have never made it to salvation. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. All right. Listen, listen. And when the people heard these evil tidings, evil. No wonder why in the world they call it evil. God's holy. Ain't that just like mankind? God is speaking this way and they considered it to be evil. But somebody say it ain't evil, it's holy. Ain't it amazing? We live in an hour where people will call what's holy evil. They'll call this narrow way. Come on, somebody. This old path. Oh, that's just too old fashioned. That's, uh, that, that, there's too much restriction. There's too many rules. There's too, blah, 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 blah. amen. On and on and on. That's just too hard and da, 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 da. Amen. You need to lighten up some, you know, that's, that's too religious or blah, whatever. Amen. And they would call it evil. But somebody says it's just holy. It said they mourned and no man did put on his ornaments. That means they didn't put on all their gold and their silver, or their ear bobs or necklaces or whatever they wore in their hair, the bright things, amen, that they would wear back then. Verse 5 says, For the Lord said unto Moses, saying to the children of Israel, You are stiff-necked people. I will come up in the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee that I might know what to do unto thee. So right there it tells us why they took off their ornaments. God told them to because if you don't, I'm going to smite you. <laughs> Amen. Because their jewelry then was part of that that was connected to their pride. Their arrogance. Come on, you know, you know. And, uh, and, and, and their prestige, their notoriety, their person, their glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And said in verse 5, For the Lord had said unto Moses, saying to the children of Israel, Ye stiff-necked people. Somebody say, God spoke to the prophet and said, Call my people names. <laughs> stiff-necked. Somebody say, When God calls you something, He didn't make a mistake. <laughs> Amen. Took their ornaments off because that represented their glory. It reminded me many years ago, I don't know how long, maybe 12 to 15 years ago, I remember, y'all remember Mr. T? Ooh. Mr. T, amen. You know, he played in Rocky Three when he was real young and all, but he, when he got older, and he's probably in his 70s by now, but somewhere in his 60s or 50s, whatever, he, he got cancer, he almost died, amen. And he turned to God in that moment, and, uh, you know, and, and he even testified that he was a mama's boy, you know, because that was always his thing, you know, go to your mama, boy, your mama, you know. He said, but I was a mama boy. I reckon his mama served God, and anyhow, he gave his life to his mama's God. He called on Jesus and he was just as crazy for Jesus and spoke strong for Jesus just like he did, you know, when he was out there doing the A-team and the, and the Rocky and whatever else he played in. Amen. But he was the tough dude, you know, Ooh, you know, the, the big guy, Ooh, Mr. T. Amen. But then, then I saw him on and he was, he'd be on there preaching. He had on, he had on sweatpants and, and white socks and flip flops and he was preaching. Boy, he'd preach. He'd get to preach and son. He'd just talk. And, and, and they ask him, why ain't you got on your jewelry? He said, because that was my glory. That's what it called. That was my person. People, you know, know me for that And when I was lost. And they, he said, but when I got saved, he said, I couldn't put my glory on no more. He talked about how he had to lay that stuff aside. Hallelujah. So this is really, God is testing them to see if they'll be sanctified. Now, God ain't told you to go and leave here tonight. No, God, he's one of them preachers. I can't even wear a ring. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, I'm not a female. And if you ain't been able to figure that out by now, I pray God open your eyes. Because if you think I'm a female, I'm the ugliest one you've ever looked on. But I ain't, I promise you. Amen. But I am not about to stick nothing in my earlobes. 
Come on, somebody. Amen. My nose, here, there. I ain't, not, come on. There, anybody here, Holy Ghost? The Amalekites were the enemies of God and they put rings, the men did. They put them in their ears, their nose, everywhere else. Amen. The men did. And they were enemies of God. And that's the only people I can find in the Bible in the Old Testament. Amen. As far as males that had earrings and put rings everywhere. Come on, somebody. Who were enemies of God. Amen. So, yeah, I'm a little old-fashioned. I remember one night I was in a revival when a young man got saved. I said, uh, take that earring out. And he took it out. And I get it to him. And I said, and I threw it in the trash can over. I said, you still want to go get it? He said, no. I said, boys don't post wear them things. If they come up and got saved and they had, was wearing a shirt with some type of occult stuff on it, I'd tell them about it. It was one night, these two guys got saved. They was teenagers. And they had on some occultic heavy metal stuff. And it was kind of expensive. And I told them, I said, you got a shirt on up under that? They said, yeah. I said, you really got saved? They said, yeah. I said, you willing to, and I began to explain to them and pray. I said, you willing to take that off that away? One of them kind of, you can tell he had the other one. Yeah, yeah. I said, God's telling you to take that off that away if you're serious. I said, that that's on it is demonic. I said, what you going to do? And they said, okay. And when they took them off, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. I said, I said tomorrow night I'll bring y'all two brand new something that costs just that much. Amen. And I took some of my check from that week and I went the next day and went and bought them two types of hoodie type things that they were wearing that was actually better than what they had. Amen. And I brought it to them the next night because if I'm going to preach to them, you need to. Amen. Y'all heard about two years ago when the Satanists come down to the altar where I was preaching at a homecoming. Amen. And the demons went to coming out of him. And when they come out of him, they come out of him because he went to ripping the necklace off of his neck that had the pentagram on it. Come on. He went to taking the rings off that had the skulls on it and everything else. And somebody shot them demons. Somebody say them demons come out screaming. Praise God when they was leaving. Hallelujah. So God right here was trying to, to separate them from their glory. You know, their prestige, their arrogance. And was making them rebellious and stiff necked to see if they'd obey him. And the children of Israel, in verse 6, stripped themselves of their ornaments on Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle, that's the tent, God's presence, and without the camp, set it up after all from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out under the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. Somebody say they left their house and they went to the tent revival. It was literally a tent. They didn't have houses then. They had a tent. So it's always been that way. They'd leave their home and go to church. It was a tent back then, but they left where they lived and they went somewhere. It's always been that way. Amen. Uh, that's ordained from the beginning. And it came to pass when Moses went out of the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door. They lived in tents as well. That was their houses. And looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. In other words, God's presence would show up like a cloud. I've seen this very few times. I don't know if it was like this, but I have literally seen the cloud of God's presence. I remember before I even uh, was called to preach, knew I was going to preach. I haven't been saved long. Amen. Four pews in front of me. The first time I ever had this experience and I was so sick in my body. I watched the similitude, the silhouette, amen, of a figure that reached from the top of the church to the bottom. And I could literally tell the outline of it. That's only ever happened one time. I was, I was. 18 years old when I saw this amen and I was sitting in the back of the church and I went to shaking in that Methodist church shaking and squalling like a baby it felt like I was on fire I didn't know what in the world was happening to me but I was I was watching what I didn't know I was like this has got to be the Lord or this this is angel so, and the four times he passed before me nobody else saw this but me but the folks the young ones that was sitting with me thought I was having a seizure or something they, they was freaking out amen I couldn't hardly I couldn't hold my composure amen now I don't care what anybody says or thinks amen I know what I saw. 
Amen. I know what I experienced. And a man that's had an experience with God is never at the mercy of somebody that's got an argument about that experience. There's been times I saw the cloud come up under our tent. I have saw it come in church services. I saw it here a couple of times. Amen. Praise the Lord God. Amen. And uh, I've had people even snap pictures. Amen. And, 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 and it, I'm not talking about just in church services. I've had somebody and I got proof of it. They snapped a picture of me right after we'd called a bass and I got on a big cowboy hat, a camouflage cowboy hat. Amen. That I cut up in a rotary mower. Amen. <laughs> Last year when the wind blew it off. Amen. But my around my hat is glowing and highlighted. Amen. And it just don't make no sense. There's nothing else in the picture done that way. Amen. It's happened in church services before. I've had people come down. Remember people come down in revival. Amen. Because the fear of God hit them because of what they saw behind me walking with me and they was the only one that saw it I didn't even see it so I'm not talking about every time I seen so if God opened all of our eyes in here right now we'd all be squalling and running to the altar come on anybody hear the Holy Ghost because Hebrews 1 14 says to those that are heirs of salvation he has his angels his delivering angels come on anybody hear the Holy Spirit amen well brother when mama dies she gonna be my angel daddy died no 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 we don't leave here and become angels we don't get wings we get a crown that we get to throw down at his feet. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. We're a little lower than angels right now according to Psalms chapter 8 verses 4. So when we die, we're not going to become an angel. We're a little lower than that. We're gonna, come on. Second uh, Corinthians 6 and 2 said we're going to judge angels. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Anybody here Holy Ghost? Angels are neither male nor female. Come on. Amen. They're not flesh. They're ministering spirits, flaming fires. Amen. As God calls them and they hearken unto the voice of his word. Psalms 103 verses 20. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Amen. So uh, when we die or when a saint dies, amen, they don't become angels. So don't, don't believe that thing. Amen. That people, you know, float around and talk about. And listen, everybody ain't got one. It's only those that are heirs of salvation, Hebrews 1, 14. Those that's been born again. Those that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Look at somebody beside you and say, give me room for my angel. Hallelujah. Some people nowadays, modernly, they don't hear stuff that preach like this and they look at you like. Yeah, it's, you either believe the Bible or you don't. But I'm telling you, if God was doing my eyes, we'd all flip out. Amen. I'd be like the priest was in the old covenant. I'd fall to the ground and y'all wouldn't get to hear me preach. You know, I'm serious. Remember in 2 Kings 6, Elijah prayed for his servant. He said, Lord, open his eyes. And when he did, he, ha! Ah! He looked up on the hill and he didn't see the flesh enemy no more, just the flesh enemy. He saw the whole mountainsides, amen, around them, surrounded, amen, with chariots and horses. He saw the angels of the Lord. Oh, Elijah's servant weren't scared no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And somebody's thinking, boy, I wish God opened my eyes. God knows what you can stand and what you can't. A lot of times we pray, but we don't even know what we ask. We're going to have to have a glorified body just to stand in his presence and see him. Because Revelation 21, I believe it is, 5 said we're going to get to see his face. You can't look on his face in this flesh like this, you'd die. That's why it says if you see it, you could do it, die. You, you couldn't stand to see it. Amen. Praise the Lord God. So here it is. Moses has went into the tabernacle, God's tent, and God comes down in a cloud. A pillar, it's what it's talking about. And stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. Moses goes in the tent and where the opening is, they call it the door. God's presence come down and block the door. And the Lord talked with Moses. Somebody say, God blocked the door. I hadn't been preaching very long and I heard the Holy Spirit tell me. He said, if you don't come talk with me daily, he said, I'll block every door just for you to rediscover that that's the most important thing I want from you is you to talk with me. Amen. Amen. Because he is the door. John 10, 9. I've had the Lord, I remember years ago, hadn't been in this long and I heard the Lord speak to me. I'd been in prayer for over an hour and the Lord, I was leaving the room and the Holy Ghost, I heard him speak to me. He said, don't leave yet, I'm not through. And in that moment, I thought of this scripture again. I said, Lord, he's standing in the door saying, don't go yet. How many times we are always in a hurry, always in a rush, we don't even hear him whispering. Say, don't leave yet. Don't go yet. 
I, I want to be with you a little while longer. There's, there's something else I want to do. Hey Amen. A lot of times people miss it. They don't even understand. Somebody will say, he'll stand in the door. Somebody will look at your neighbor and say, he'll be standing in your doorway to your room in the morning when you wake up waiting on you. Wow. Hallelujah. Listen, and it said... And it came to pass as Moses entered the tabernacle of the cloudy pillar. We didn't stand stood at the door and you talked with Moses. Verse 10, and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped. Wouldn't you? Every man in his tent door. And listen, verse 11, and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend and turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun. That's N U N, and that don't mean she was Catholic. Because she's a nun, she wouldn't have had a son. I spelled it for you because that don't mean Joshua didn't have no mom and daddy. The son of Nun. <laughs> Amen. It said, A young man departed not out of the tabernacle. Joshua's following Moses, he's watching all this go on. Moses walks back to the camp. Joshua is focused on God. Somebody say, that's all God sends us Moses is for. People get focused on a Moses. Moses is sent to us. God's prophet to preach and say what God says and point us to God. We're supposed to get in love with God like Joshua did. Come on, somebody. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? But it makes sense. You got to make sure you hang out with the Moses God put around you because that's what's going to happen. There's, there's introductions to levels of God you'll never know until God sends you a Moses. He's going to send you a preacher. Somebody shout, he always works this way. There's no preacherless move of God's presence. There's no wordless move of God's presence. There's no such thing, amen, is the absence of a preacher personality when God starts moving. Even in the book of Acts, Acts 2, Holy Ghost moved. They got filled with the Holy Ghost in the upper room after praying 10 days. And by verse 4, 14 of Acts 2, here Peter, the apostle of God, stands up with the other 11 preachers and they start preaching the gospel. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? When God shows up and his fire falls and he moves, somebody shout, there's going to be a preacher that stands up and preaches. There's no such thing as a move of God that's preacherless, that's, that's wordless, that's no, not having nobody proclaim. Thus says the word of the Lord. Amen. So Moses, that's what he was there. He was there to hear from God and say to the people what God was saying. Amen. But for them, amen, ain't it amazing? There would have been a million plus people. They all stood in their tent door and watched, but only one. Kind of sounds like they don't. And he happened to be a young man, just one young man. Somebody shout, we need to be like Joshua. Oh, I went and heard the preacher preach. Well, you didn't get inspired to move toward God? Well, I went to church, heard the preacher preach. Well, when you hear the preacher preach, you're supposed to do some reaching after you hear the preaching. Luke 16 and 16, the Bible said in the word of the Lord, he said until the time of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. Somebody say, the word of God is preached and every man has to reach into it. Somebody say, you got to reach when you hear the preacher preach or you ain't going to get there. Joshua was a reacher. Amen. Yes, he followed the preacher. Amen. But then he reached out for himself. So in vain, people just go to church. People just go hear a message, just go hear a And they do not go after God. What good is that? No wonder the church can't flourish. No wonder God can't move. Amen. The preacher's going after God, hearing from God, and then saying what God's telling him to say. And people sit there and watch, and they just sit there and nod, and some nod off, and hey, come on somebody, and they just casually approach God. Hallelujah. And the Lord, touch me if you can. If I, if I decide to, Lord, I, you know, it feels good just sitting here. You know, I've been working all week. I've been doing all kinds of stuff. I'm tired, Lord. I'm a, Yeah, and you're going to always be that way. You ain't going to go no further in God because the Moses can't get you there. The preacher can't get you there. All they can do is give you the word. But you're going to have to go after God like you see that's being presented before you in whatever Moses God has placed in your life. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Oh, yes. And Joshua was like, I ain't going back to my tent the same way I came to God's tent. I didn't come to God's tent following his prophet, amen, to leave without something. I'm going to leave with something that the prophet's got. Amen. Because if I'm going to get what the prophet's got, I'm going to have to do what the prophet did. 
it done. Hallelujah. The son of Nun done something. Come on, somebody. Joshua said, I ain't leaving until I get to know you this way too. All right. And it said, and the Lord spake to Moses face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. You might say face to face. What a relationship. That's all that statement's there for. Somebody's thinking, well, I can't know him face to face. Why not? Why not? Somebody say face to face. That's God's Facebook right there. It's the Bible. Because listen, God spoke to him face to face. In other words, Moses' face, his face represents his focus. He was not stiff neck. His neck was turned toward God. It's his focus. And God spake to him because where does the mouth, you know, where is it at? The face. So God's face is God's word. It's hearing God. That's his face. That's, it's him speaking. Amen. Somebody say, if you want to hear God speak, God's got to hear you speak. You got to speak with God. It's called prayer. You got to get along with God. You can't sit around and do what everybody else in the world and the lukewarm does. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, where they watch more TV than anything or stare at their phones more than they do the Bible. Come on, somebody. Or every excuse in the world they can find like the world finds. When it's time to go after God, they somewhere else. Somebody say, you ain't in the right place. You got to get in the right place. You got to go after God. Somebody, God ain't going to send somebody to do it for you that ain't how it works amen he'll send people around you to try to inspire you to do what they're doing and Moses said to the Lord see thou saidest to me bring up this people and thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me Moses Moses is going through what every preacher goes through at some point tell him Lord who's with me and who's not I'm serious. There ain't one preacher, there ain't one man or one of God, if they're honest, hadn't prayed that a bunch of times. Moses is saying, Lord, you ain't told me who's with me or who's not. Amen. He somehow missed Joshua. And listen, he said, yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. Moses was saying, God, I don't know who's really with me or who's not with me. In other words, Moses had a million people in his congregation. He didn't get to go home. They all lived in the same community. Brother Rob, he didn't know who he could trust. He didn't know who was with him or not. But he reminded himself, God, you said you called me by my name. In other words, and he, Moses was saying, Lord, you're with me. I know you are. I know your presence is with me. Come on, somebody. All right. And he says... If I, you know, I pray thee, if I found grace in your sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. Moses weren't asking for another miracle. My God, he'd seen miracle after miracle. If anybody got to witness miracles, Lord have mercy. You imagine some stuff Moses got to see and witness. But he didn't ask for another miracle. He said, I want to know you. That was the reason. God, I want to know your ways. There's some people, they don't want to know God's ways. They just want to get God's wonders. Give me your wonders. I don't care if I ever get acquainted with you. I don't care if you go anywhere with me as long as you just go before me and do something for me and make some things happen and shift stuff around. Amen. So my life here will be a little bit better because some people's approach to God has nothing to do with eternity. It's all about this life. It's all about now. And... Not Moses. He said, I want you to show me your ways. I want to know how you do things. I want to know why you do them, how you do them. I want to follow your ways. I want to know your precepts. I want to know, amen, your lifestyle, God. I want to know how you do it. I want to live that way because I don't want to miss you. Somebody say he wanted to know God's ways because he wanted to know God. He didn't want to just know God. About God, know God's signs and wonders occasionally. No, I want to know the one that's doing it. Moses was asking to have a relationship with God. He wanted a relationship. In verse 14, and God spoke to him and said, My presence shall go with thee, I'll give thee rest. And he said unto him, This is Moses talking back to God, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Right here, Moses is going all the way back to the first part of this chapter in verses 1. 
through 3 where God done told them, I'll go before you I'll send my angel or I'll send my angel before you I'll smite the enemy I'll give you the promised land I'll give you all the blessings flow of milk and honey but I'm not going to go with you Moses still had that in his mind God said he wasn't going to go with us and God just told Moses because you want to know me because you want me you don't want just something from me you don't want to just see my power perform a promise for you you want my presence you want to know me you want my person because only a person has a presence God says I'll go with you I won't be going with them but I'll go with you and you'll have rest so they can have all the promises, have all the riches, but they won't have no rest. Have you ever known people so wealthy they didn't know what to do with it all, but they had no peace, had no rest. You can't make enough of money to get peace. Anybody here, Holy Ghost, you can't have enough success in the world to get peace. You can't smoke it in a pipe. Come on, somebody. You can't find it in a new relationship. You can't find it in making another dollar bill. You can't make it in having a bigger house and more cars. Oh, and more toys to play with. Somebody shout, you can only find this in the presence of your creator. And God promised Moses peace, rest from his presence. Because you want to know me, I'll give you my presence and I'll give you rest. In other words, your success will be my presence. No matter what you got, no matter what you don't have, you'll be at peace. Wow. Somebody said you can't buy that. Mm -mm, you can't find that nowhere but in Jesus. All right? Hallelujah. I'm about through. I'm preaching some of you to the rest room. Hallelujah. Uh, that's okay. You got to go. You got to go. Amen. I was wondering why some of you looking at me a little cloudy. You, you're getting full. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right? And he said, Lord, if you don't go with me, carry us not up hence. In other words, Moses said, they ain't going to be leaderless. They ain't going nowhere either. Because if you don't go with me, I ain't going with nobody else anywhere. Moses was saying, God, I'll stay right here in this low desert. I'll struggle the rest of my life just to have you with me. I don't want you to promote me. I don't want no promised land. I don't want victories over this enemy and that enemy. I don't want to see some angel escort me nowhere. If you don't go, I'd rather struggle, stay in a low place, go without just to have you than to have all that from you and be from you Amen. and not have you. Somebody would say, that is what the church has got to have again. He said, I want God's presence more than I want anything else. Amen. I don't want promotion without God's presence. Somebody would say, God's presence. That's success. Amen. That is success. Amen. How successful are you? Judge it by his presence. Amen. You walk with God. Does God say, I want to go with you? Some people satisfied that God just go with them for a moment. Just go with me, Lord, and fix this. Moses was like, mm -mm, I want to go with God. Amen. Someone says the difference. And God just going with you and you going with God. Moses said, you're my promotion. Somebody say, promotion without God's presence is a complete failure. There ain't no success. No, by the world standard, their definition of success is something totally different. Amen? Amen? Preacher, how successful are you? How many people come hear you? How many people do what you say? Or blah, 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 blah. I'm successful by whether or not he's still with me or not. Yes. That's my success. Yes. With that said, I am successful. Yes. Hallelujah. I've not been up here one second today without him. I constantly bumping into him. I'm bumping into him in my office. I'm bumping into him in the middle of the night this morning at 12 a.m. from 12 to almost 3. I got up, got up and stepped on the carpet and bumped into him again. Hallelujah. That's success. His presence. And if you want to know him, you've got to ask for his ways.
A lot of people say they want to know God, but they don't want God's ways. That's right. They don't want to do things his way. Moses didn't say, I want to know you. He said, I want, show me your ways so I can know you. Know you. There's that word new. It's talk, he's talking about being intimate with God, knowing God. He's talking about a relationship with God. Somebody say, until we do what God says, his way. Not our way, but Yahweh. His way. Until we do it his way, you'll be hindered in being able to approach him any closer. So when God says, this is what I say, this is my way, this is what you must do. Somebody say, you've got to obey. Or you can forget it. You're not going to prostitute his presence. You're not going to force your way. Huh, it ain't by force, it's by faith. Amen. Amen. So you, and, and the faith is to do it. You, you got to obey the faith. You got to do what he tells you to do. All right. And by verse 21, I'm going to skip down. The Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Thou shalt stand upon the rock. I couldn't help when I was singing that song in your presence. Because verse 22, And it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by. That means his presence. I will put thee in the cleft of the rock and will cover thee that my hand with my hand while I pass by. Verse 23, And I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. This is when I said, uh, you know, the sun mooned <laughs> he only saw God's backside wow think about it God put him in the cleft of the rock somebody say Jesus somebody say Christ is that rock 2 Corinthians 12 amen talks about in verses 4 2 Corinthians 10 4 rather so that is a prophetic parallel to the gospel you could say that that is you know the example of how God puts us in Christ and that's the only way we can see God that's the only way we can know God to see God means to know God don't mean I'm visibly seeing God amen unless God just wants to show himself that way to you amen and a lot of people don't when people when you meet people they always talk about they seeing angels and they're always seeing God you know They, I mean, they say like they see him more than the prophets did. And all the, I mean, they've seen him more than folks in heaven have. <laughs> to listen to them. Hello? You're going to have to run the other way then. Somebody say, <laughs> them, them ain't, they ain't in the glory, they ain't to the goofy. Yeah. Amen? Praise God. But that's amazing. God said, there's a place by me. Somebody say, a place by me and you'll stand on the rock. Somebody say a place by me. Notice he didn't say there's just a place behind me. A long way off. He said there's an actual place by me. Some people, come here brother Rob. We're going to exercise a little bit. Some people's just satisfied and you just follow me. and just You can kind of hang back. Just do it slow. You know, some people that's that's all they're satisfied with. Yeah, I'm following Jesus. I'm following Jesus. Moses wasn't satisfied to just follow him. God called him his servant, but God also called Moses friend because this is how Moses. This is the portrait. Turn sideways. This is how Moses and God were the relationship. See the face to face. There it is. That close. Somebody say there's a place by me. God don't want us to just be his servant. Thank you, Brother Raw. He wants us to be his friend. Amen. How friendly have you been to him? Moses said, God, if you don't go, I don't want to go. Hallelujah. Lord, if I can't have you, I don't want nothing else. God, it breaks his heart. Because there's so many people modernly today. They care nothing about that kind of walk. They just want the fringe benefits, so to speak. Lord, send that angel. People will shout over an angel sight. They'll shout over milk and honey flowing. Hell, shout over victory over this enemy and that enemy. Amen. But don't even know how to shout over his presence. Amen. 
Don't even know how to shout over his person. But they can shout over his promises, son. They can get excited about so many things. But I don't want to be just excited about what he's going to do and what he's done. I want to be excited over him, period. Him, him, him. His presence. Somebody say his presence. That's success. That should be what turns us on. And Lord, have mercy. If people realized they was actually coming to his presence and not just a service, it would change everything. But here's the sad truth. Some will never know. Because they just won't listen. They just will not listen to what God is saying. They'd rather stand at a distance and be entertained by God from their little tent door. <gasps> you see what's going on there, boy, ants, huh? Call them the sideline saints, the bleacher brothers. Come on. And they're like the 50 sons of the prophets in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 7. They sit over on the sidelines on the other side of Jordan while they watch Elijah and Elisha cross over and God's glory come down and the chariot and the mantle fall on Elisha. Amen. They had heard all day that this was going to happen. So they showed up for the show. But they weren't willing to cross on over. They could have been in it. But they were just satisfied from a distance. Yeah. They didn't want to get in it. They just wanted to be around it close enough to get something out of it. Amen. And a lot of people don't want to get any closer because they know if they get closer, just like with God and Moses, they're going to have to take off something. They're going to have to step out of something. Because God said, this is holy ground. The closer you get to me, the more God requires of you, amen, to step out and step away and to leave, depart so you can go up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. God, to you be the glory.